Hello friends, today I wanted to bring you along for a homeschool day in the life and also share with you some of our large family logistics and how I get things done with my children in tow. Hello, I'm Stacy, a wife and homemaker of 18 years and a homeschooling mom to eight children. I help equip Christian women to keep their homes with excellence while keeping their hearts abiding in Christ. Welcome to Abiding Home. Today we are around the table with our homeschool. Some of the other children are scattered through the house with their homeschool work. We have a few desks in various places and sometimes having the children sit separately but still nearby helps to keep distractions to a minimum. My four-year-old has some preschool curriculum that he likes to work through when the others are doing their school. Since he isn't officially in school, I try to make this learning time both constructive and fun. Here is a little look at the ACE Preschool Math. With the ACE curriculum, you receive 12 small magazine-sized workbooks per subject to be completed within a year. Usually these books are paced to take around three weeks per book. Many of my other children also use ACE, and so my son feels like a part of the group having his own ACE books as well. I keep each of my children's curriculum organized in binders like the one you see here. Here is a look at the kindergarten handwriting I'm using this year. It's called A Reason for Handwriting. This was gifted to me as a curriculum to review from the company, and so far I'm really enjoying it. Here is a flip through. It begins with learning and mastering the letters. Once it finishes teaching the letters, it moves to a five-day plan where the student practices specific letters and words, preparing them to write a particular verse from the Bible by the end of the week. One of my favorite parts of this curriculum is that at the end of each week, the child will use one of the sheets in the back of the book to color and then write their scripture for the week. It makes a nice keepsake or a gift to give family or friends. My son is working slowly through this since he is four. We are doing just two or three lines a day with his best work, since this is his first time really learning how to write. Kugam has graciously gifted us with some fun learning toys to enjoy and incorporate into our homeschool. Kugam has thoughtfully designed eco-friendly toys and games designed to ignite curiosity and to teach valuable skills. This first toy is a wooden board with the letters carved into the wood and it has a wooden pencil to practice tracing the letters. This is great quality, very aesthetic, and helps children gain muscle memory for writing without the frustration of making mistakes. Next, we tested out the Snap-on Dino Builders, and I have to say that these were a huge hit with my children. You snap together the pieces to create specific dinosaurs, or you can mix and match to create your own dinosaur. Once my children put together their dinosaurs, they quickly came up with some creative pretend play, which lasted for over an hour. While the children enjoyed their new dino snap builders, I decided to have a cup of coffee and work on meal planning for a bit. 
One thing that I think is important for moms to know is that you do not have to have a perfectly quiet and calm atmosphere or a break away from the children in order to sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee and to do something more adult-like. We are not just mothers. We are also wives, homemakers, and children of God. And children are capable of playing contently and entertaining themselves. If they struggle with doing this, then it pays to take time to teach and train them how to play together in a way that is peaceful and also that respects the adults around them. It's very important that while our children know we love them and sacrifice for them, that they also realize that the home does not center around them. Child-centered homes are unpleasant for the adults and the children who live in them, and it isn't the way God has commanded us to raise our children. I want to read an excerpt from a book that I've read many times and that has greatly helped me in my mothering. It's called The Duties of Parents by J.C. Ryle. You can get this book completely free on Chapel Library, and I will leave a link in the description below. If you would train your children rightly, train them in the way they should go and not in the way that they would. Remember children are born with a decided bias towards evil, and therefore if you let them choose for themselves, they are certain to choose wrong. The mother cannot tell what her tender infant may grow up to be, tall or short, weak or strong, wise or foolish. He may be any of these things or not, it is all uncertain. But one thing the mother can say with certainty, he will have a corrupt and sinful heart. It is natural to us to do wrong. Foolishness, says Solomon, is bound in the heart of a child. Proverbs 22:15. A child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Proverbs 29:15. Our hearts are like the earth on which we tread. Let it alone, and it is sure to bear weeds. If, then, you would deal wisely with your child, you must not leave him to the guidance of his own will. Think for him, judge for him, act for him, just as you would for one weak and blind. But for pity's sake, give him not up to his own wayward taste and inclinations. It must not be his likings and wishes that are consulted. He knows not yet what is good for his mind and soul, any more than what is good for his body. You do not let him decide what he shall eat, and what he shall drink, and how he shall be clothed. Be consistent, and deal with his mind in like manner. Train him in the way that is scriptural and right, and not in the way that he fancies. If you cannot make up your mind to this first principle of Christian training, it is useless for you to read any further. Self-will is almost the first thing that appears in a child's mind, and it must be your first step to resist it. Second, train up your child with all tenderness, affection, and patience. I do not mean that you are to spoil him, but I do mean that you should let him see that you love him. Love should be the silver thread that runs through all your conduct. Kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, forbearance, patience, sympathy, a willingness to enter into childish troubles, a readiness to take part in childish joys. These are the cords by which a child may be led most easily. These are the clues you must follow if you would find the way to his heart. Few are to be found, even among grown-up people, who are not more easily to draw than to drive. There is that in all our minds which rises in arms against compulsion. We set up our backs and stiffen our necks at the very idea of a forced obedience. We are like young horses in the hand of a breaker. Handle them kindly and make much of them, and by and by you may guide them with thread use them roughly and violently, and it will be many a month before you get the mastery of them at all. Now children's minds are cast in much the same mold as our own. Sternness and severity of manner chill them and throw them back. 
it shuts up their hearts, and you will weary yourself to find the door. But let them only see that you have an affectionate feeling towards them, that you are really desirous to make them happy and do them good, that if you punish them, it is intended for their profit, and that, like the pelican, you would give your heart's blood to nourish their souls. Let them see this, I say, and they will soon be all your own, but they must be wooed with kindness if their attention is ever to be won. Ladies, I can't explain how helpful this little booklet from J.C. Ryle has been. Even this point alone, how true this is. Children are more easily drawn than driven. And aren't we all? Isn't it easier to submit to your husband when he is loving and affectionate towards you even as he gives you guidance and leadership than it is if he's coldly or harshly giving you instructions and corrections? This is also true for our children. And we are wise to remember this, even when we feel frustrated, tired, and overstimulated. While my children played, I was working on planning out my week, meal planning, and scripture meditation. I wanted to show you a little look at how I'm currently doing these things. We are working on changing our diet slightly to a more Mediterranean diet, and so I'm having to learn new recipes and plan in a bit more detailed way than I have in past videos where I simply kept a stocked pantry and chose what I wanted to make on that day. So I'm looking through the recipe books and writing the meal book, and page number to the recipe in my planner. Here is a look at my planner. This is actually a planner that I designed myself and have for sale on Amazon. I'll leave the link to it below if this looks like something that would help you. Here are a few of my weeks. Sometimes I just write in everything and it's messy yet productive. Other weeks I like to take some time and make it pretty simply because I enjoy the process and find it relaxing and fun. Here's a little look at the cover and I'll flip through. It is undated. I decided to do this so that it could be purchased and started at any time. I also like this because if I plan a week or a month and then plans change drastically, such as a vacation being canceled or something like that, I can just flip the page and replan my week or month. I've done this a few times and it's much better than using whiteout and trying to salvage the week or the month's layout. So here is a look at the monthly spreads. Each month has a scripture to meditate on and it has extra space to write yourself specific memos and focuses for the month. These are the weekly layouts and are honestly my favorite part of the planner. I personally needed a place to keep track of habits and routines that repeat, weekly goals which I seek to do each week, and to-do lists which change from week to week. I use these days of the week spaces to keep track of appointments, music lessons, church meetings, and things of that nature to make sure I'm not double booking anything or forgetting any commitments I've made. I also felt I needed a blank note taking space each week to plan meals and to keep track of miscellaneous things that might vary from week to week. This planner has been perfect and if you get it, I hope it blesses you and helps you feel a bit more organized and focused. Next, I want to share with you all the new way that I'm currently memorizing and meditating on scriptures. First, I write the verse at the top of my card, then I write a few applications for that verse that are relevant to my current life circumstances. On the back, I write the first letter of each word, and this is how I practice memorizing the verse. The letters give me a hint. Once I can do it well with the letters, then I practice without looking and quickly check myself after. I'm excited to start using this little tool for my scripture meditation. This was just a 99 cent index card notebook from Walmart.
You probably have noticed by now that no two days in my life really look the same. We have a general rhythm to our days, but I've learned with children you need to be flexible and willing to change things up as needed. It's easy to be discouraged by messes or what feels like chaos, but oftentimes, if I'm really honest with myself, most of that is only because I have set expectations that don't really align with the season of life I'm in or the circumstances God has placed me in. In 1 Timothy 2.10, we read that godliness with contentment is great gain. And in Philippians, Paul says, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Motherhood and homemaking offers many opportunities to fight for this same type of contentment. We learn how to have sleep and how to not have sleep, how to have messes and how to clean them up. Sometimes we have free time, and sometimes we don't even have a chance to take a shower. Other times, the temptation for discontent comes when we believe the lie that homemaking and motherhood are supposed to look like a 1950s housewife in a magazine. But that isn't truly what biblical homemaking and motherhood looks like. When you have a house full of children that you are educating and training yourself, then you will have to adjust your expectations away from something that was set as a precedent for women who only had two children and sent them to school every day while they cleaned the house and prettied themselves up for their husbands and children to come home in the evening. Real biblical womanhood doesn't look like that. And when we set our hearts on something different than what God has for us, then we set ourselves up for discontentment and even idolatry. So fight for contentment and flexibility in your homemaking and mothering. I have a few more fun learning games from Kugam to share with you all. This one is a sight word fishing game. Each color of fish is at a different reading level. This is nice because you can encourage your child to try to catch a specific color. Each time they catch a fish, they read the word aloud, and if they get the word correctly, then they keep their fish in their own pile. Next up is this adorable wooden puzzle. You start by setting up the game, following the patterns in the instructions. This alone was a good activity for my son. You can choose different difficulty levels, and since he is four, we chose an easy one to start off with. Once your pieces are in place, you then have to figure out how to place the other pieces into the puzzle so that each square is covered. I actually found this game to be fun, even for me. Up next is this super cute reading activity. It comes with a little wooden easel, word cards with the pictures and the words, and then CVC short vowel words on a rod. The child can then look at the word and decide which vowel is used in the middle. From there, they can spin the other letters to match the word on the card. As children advance, you could challenge them to do it without looking at the word on the card and instead just saying the word out loud. Then you could add the card last to let them check their work. There are many ways these tools could be used to practice and reinforce early reading and spelling. After our school and learning games were done for the day, we all decided to soak up this East Tennessee fall weather outside. My daughter saved up her own money to buy a four-wheeler and this has been a big hit for everyone. While the children play, I wanted to leave you with a poem on motherhood to give you some final encouragements to keep your heart abiding in Christ in the midst of busy mothering and homemaking. Too Busy Mother I'd take the time, dear Lord, to pray, but see what work there is today, the washing, baking, clothes to mend, and all the family to tend. And so goes by another day without a moment spent to pray. Things go awry, the starch bowls o'er, my temper's high, I mop the floor. The rush to do my work aright does not seem worth the fight by night. 
Perhaps I would accomplish more if I strength and grace were gained before. Forgive me, Lord, the Martha view, when I so need the time with you. I'm sure a quarter hour or so would help to rout my own soul's foe. I cannot be from care set free without some fellowship with thee. By Francis R. Longing. I know this isn't easy to hear, but we actually do have enough time to read our Bibles and pray. When we don't, it's not because we don't have time, It's because we choose to prioritize other things instead. But we truly need that spiritual nourishment so that we can pour out from a full cup overflowing to minister to and serve our families. I'm so glad you all could join me today. I pray it was a blessing to your heart. Please consider subscribing and sharing this video with a friend. I'll see you next time.